Australian government budgets are under pressure and could see a combined annual deficit of $60 billion by 2023. CEO John Daly of Grattan Institute pieces together the problems of the budget deficit. If you look at the history of the Commonwealth government budgets over the last four years and you just look at the discretionary decisions, the long run impact of those discretionary decisions has been to improve the Commonwealth budget balance by about $60 billion a year. So it's about the scale of problem that we're talking about. The catch is that at the same time, we've made a series of decisions to increase expenditure or reduce taxes that have worsened the Commonwealth, bottom budget, Commonwealth budget bottom line by about $60 billion. And so, of course, the net impact has been pretty close to zero. There's every chance that Commonwealth revenues, at least as a percentage of gross domestic product, will increase again as uh, the Australian dollar falls. The catch is that we'll be in a world in which essentially mining prices are falling quite quickly. But on the other hand, the things that governments pay for will continue to increase in price. And so what that means is that even if Commonwealth revenues increase again as a percentage of GDP, it's very good chance that Commonwealth expenditures as a percentage of GDP will increase even faster. And what that means is that the budget deficit that we now see looks like it will be with us for quite some time. Indeed, on the work that we've done, Commonwealth and state governments are likely to be running a deficit of in the order of about 4% of GDP within the next decade. That's $60 billion in today's terms. It's clearly a lot of money and it's clearly not sustainable. Prime Minister Gillard says that spending is controlled, but the amount of tax money coming to the government is growing much slower than expected. What do the numbers say? Well, what the numbers say is that uh, health spending in real terms has increased very quickly. Most of the dollar increase is a consequence of the fact that people are using more health services. So a 50 year old today relative to a 50 year old 10 years ago sees the doctor more often, uh, has more tests done, does more operations uh, and then uh, takes more drugs. And of course all of that costs money. Now that we're seeing mining prices come off, we're seeing revenues increase much less quickly, that increase in health expenditure is becoming much more of a problem. And if it continues to increase uh, over the next decade at the same rate that it has over the last decade, that's going to blow quite a substantial hole in Commonwealth and state budgets, and it's not yet obvious what's going to pay for it. Now, regardless of the budget revenue, the, the PM says that the school funding and the National Disability Insurance Scheme will not be jeopardised. Given the situation of the budget, is this still realistic? It's possible. Uh, it depends very much on what tough decisions you're going to make. Uh, as I said, the task in front of Australian governments today and over the next four or five years is quite substantial. Uh, it's a gap of about 4% uh, of GDP. Uh, if you want to do things like the National Disability Insurance Scheme and the uh, Gonski reforms, which between them are worth about 1% of GDP, that just makes the task that much harder. Uh, can we do it? Yes. Should we do it? It frankly depends on you know how much you value having money in your own pocket, uh, having a disability insurance scheme, uh, and having all of the other things that might have to be cut in order to make uh, the space. I would have thought, given the situation in Europe, that we shouldn't need to be explaining to people uh, that getting yourself into a large quantity of debt in the long run is not a very good idea. Uh, and we're seeing a number of European governments being forced to cut really very basic social services. If you are going to reduce a budget deficit, by definition, uh, you need to either increase taxes or you need to reduce expenditures. And either way, people will be adversely affected by that. Uh, and so you need to build the political coalition and the political understanding of what the problem is so that people can understand why they are going to have to, um, as it were, be less well off than they might be otherwise in the short term. <laughs>